morning, brethren. <clears throat> this is a good theme, a good thing for us to consider. <clears throat> Things which are before us. <clears throat> We have to confess that there are a lot of things yet before us. This doesn't mean that <clears throat> what the Lord has given us now is insufficient because we, we feast on good things right now in the present time. <clears throat> the vast majority of it is by faith, though. So we're looking this weekend at things that are ahead that will, will not be experienced by faith but will have the full substance of what the Lord has promised us. So there's a the great deal of good things before us, as the scriptures say, the, <clears throat> it hath not entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. But he hath revealed it unto us by his spirit. It doesn't say we've experienced it all, or we've, we get it all, but we, it's been revealed, at least the nature of it and somewhat of it's been revealed. So these are the things that we speak of this weekend. <clears throat> So there are things that are yet before us that simply cannot be had in this world because of the environment of enmity, because we're still in these bodies. There are some things that the Lord has for us, that, and, and he's waiting too. Now, don't forget that. There's things that, that God and Christ and the Holy Spirit, they're waiting for some things too. So there, there are things that cannot be had in this present realm, in this present time, in these, in these bodies that we live in right now. So there's some good things ahead. We do have a table that's prepared for us, but, but it's in the presence of our enemies <clears throat> sometimes. So <clears throat> now we're going to talk about a table that's prepared that's not in the presence of any enemies, the marriage supper of the Lamb. <clears throat> now if Paul had... If the things which are before us were attainable here, then Paul would not have said that he reaches forth for them. This is like the, the woman with the issue of blood as she, she pursued and sought out the Lord to heal her. She had to press through the crowd. She used all of her resources to get to Christ. She, had, she was on her feet. She had to press. She had to move forward. But also she was reaching out with her arms. She's getting as close to as much of Christ as she can get. This is how we press forward. We're, we're, our whole person is moving out, reaching, stretching forth to these things which are before us. <clears throat> and there are certainly green pastures and still waters that Christ leads us to in this world. <clears throat> There's a feast of good things given to us in the gospel. Sweet fellowship with Christ and with all those in Zion. <clears throat> An innumerable company of angels and the spirits of just men made perfect, and God the judge of all, but the best is yet to come. <clears throat> Here we're pilgrims and strangers, and we're sojourning, but our feast is on the move. We, we kind of pause now and then, and we set up a table like, like now, but the table's in the wilderness, isn't it? And so we've got a table in the presence of our enemies, we've got a table in the wilderness, but, well, this is a different table now. This is the marriage supper of the Lamb. <clears throat> so this is about a feast that is yet to come. This is a feast of triumph and of victory. <clears throat> it's a feast that celebrates the end of the warfare and the putting down of all enmity against the Lord and against his Christ. So this is a feast of consummation. It's a great supper that will not be served until the present work of God is finished. <clears throat> Revelation 19, verses 7 through 9, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, <clears throat> Write, I like the scene here. Now we've we've read this text recently. This is immediately after the fall, the judgment of Babylon, and this is a scene in heaven. Things that go on in heaven. There's a lot to see. Sister Michelle read where John sees this great multitude, a great throng in heaven, and the voice of mighty thunderings as they praise God. So there's a lot that John sees with his eyes. But the angel interrupts. He says, "Now wait. Write this. 
here's what I want you to write about all this that you just saw. Write this. Blessed. Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. <clears throat> and he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. <clears throat> Now, this is the only place in Scripture where the marriage supper of the Lamb is mentioned. And as you can see, there's not a lot of detail given about it. It just, just says, blessed are those that are called unto it. Yeah. But look at the context in which this is placed. This great rejoicing and great praising of God in heaven, in this context, in this setting, this is like the angels giving John a hint of what's yet to come. You think this is something. Blessed are those they that are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. That's going to be a great supper. <clears throat> now the lack of details here doesn't stifle faith or discourage faith. <clears throat> Just to consider these words, the marriage supper of the Lamb renews our hope and strengthens our hands and knees. There is a great supper with Christ that we have been called unto. We should take note that those who are called to the marriage of the Supper of the Lamb is, are on a very exclusive guest list. Only the saints will be there. Only the ones that are justified. Only the redeemed. <clears throat> only the faithful. Only the righteous. All the overcomers will be there. All the ones who confess that they were pilgrims and strangers in this world will be there. Only those who lost their lives in this world will be there. Those who fell upon the stone will be there. Only the sons of God will be called to this supper. Only those who are worthy to be called the Lamb's wife will sit down to supper with him. So who is it that's called to the marriage supper of the Lamb? Well, from the saint's point of view, there are many. Let us rejoice and be glad. And his fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. So we're talking about a great and innumerable company of people. <clears throat> Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. But now from heaven's point of view, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit says the Lamb's wife is the one that's been called. Just as, as one person. <clears throat> to me, that this indicates the unity and the, the completion of Christ's work that that the, the entire throng, the entire innumerable company of the people of God can just be called the Lamb's wife. And Jesus is satisfied with that. And God is satisfied with that. So this is an indication of the greatness of this work. <clears throat> also it says, His wife hath made herself, singular, hath made herself ready. You think of all the number of saints, how could, how could so many people who were once sinners of the seed of Adam's race, how could all these be brought together, such great diversity, Jews and Gentiles, be all brought together into one to where the Holy Spirit speaks like this, his wife. She's made herself ready. There's, there's no corruption in this body. There's, no, there's nothing to defile it. We're all one. Herself. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. <clears throat> now this is, we want to take note that this is the marriage supper of the Lamb. <clears throat> and quite frankly, <clears throat> heaven is more concerned about Jesus getting what he wants than about you and I getting what we want. <clears throat> Although we will get what we want. But this is the marriage supper of the Lamb, and that's... That's what in this scene that John was given, that's what everyone's looking for. That's what they're watching for is they're going to see that the lamb gets what God has promised him and what he deserves and what he has earned. The lamb's going to be glorified in this marriage supper. <clears throat> so it's the marriage supper of the lamb. It's not the marriage supper of the church. Sometime in eternity past, the father and the word purposed that the word would be made flesh in order to save and bring many sons to glory. So this required that the word humble himself and be made in the likeness of sinful flesh and become a servant <clears throat> and learn obedience and suffer and be rejected and betrayed of men and bear the sins of the whole world in his body on the tree. 
It required that he sacrifice himself and obey the Father's command given him to lay down his life and to take it up again. Now God, with this, God made some promises to the word. <clears throat> this is what heaven's looking, looking for. Psalm 2 says, I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. This is a conversation between the father and son. The father says, this is what I'll do for you, because you're going to do that for me. And Isaiah 9, verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father the prince of peace, of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. <clears throat> the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. And Paul in Hebrews 1 says, he, but he saith unto, unto the Son, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. So all these things, and, and you know much more, was promised to the word. If he would do this thing to lay down his life and take it up again and bring many sons to glory. Now, again, I remind you of the scene here. All heaven is watching for this. They're watching, they're waiting for this marriage supper of the Lamb where the fulfillment of the Father's word to the Son comes to pass. <clears throat> so that all heaven is watching and learning to see how the Father will fulfill his promise to his Son. So now what kind, now you've got to figure your place in this. Now what kind of bride is this Lamb going to get? What kind of bride did the Father prepare for his lamb. And this text in Isaiah 6 says he'll be the everlasting father. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Isaiah 9. What kind of fruit will he bear? What kind of children will the, the Lord have? <clears throat> and from what nations will they come? Heaven is waiting with great anticipation for the lamb to receive his bride. Jesus is presently ruling over heaven and earth with all power and authority. There is great expectation there in heaven for a suitable bride for him. That is why there will be such praise and rejoicing in heaven when Babylon falls because it will become obvious there that his wife has made herself ready. She's passed through this test. Despite the devil's best efforts to deceive and to corrupt the work of God, when Babylon falls, this will be revealed. There, there's the lamb's wife. She's... Even through all this, she's made herself ready. And she's worthy to be called the Lamb's wife. <clears throat> now we're getting ready for the supper. <clears throat> she passed the test. Now there are no details given about the marriage supper of the Lamb, but Jesus gives us some things to think about in his parables. <clears throat> now if you want to know uh, what, what this is all about in heaven, Jesus had this to say, in Matthew chapter 22 and verse 2, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. And you know you're familiar with the rest of this parable about how he goes and, and calls those that were bidden to come to the feast and they wouldn't come. They gave excuses. So he went out and, and called all the others to come to the feast. But, but I, mainly I wanted to focus on this first verse. Jesus opens up what's what's going on in heaven what is the father doing for the son well it's like a king making a marriage for his son that's what's happening <clears throat> or we could say the same thing like this in the kingdom of heaven the father is blessing the son God is making a marriage for his son who is the lamb's wife she's the one that the father chose and prepared for him <clears throat> And it's not just, it's not just pre preparation for the ceremony, for the, for the wedding and for the feast. It's the preparation is for an eternal marriage 
for us to sit with Christ in his throne. This is what God is doing. For whom he did know, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. See, the, the father's preparing this marriage for his son. 1 Peter 2.9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. What is, what is it that God is doing in these things? He's making a marriage for his son. You've heard of a marriage made in heaven? Well, this is it. <clears throat> the supper is for the lamb, <clears throat> but blessed are those that are called unto it. <clears throat> See, what, what I'm doing... I. What I want to do here is to show you how great a supper, how great a marriage this must be because of the Lamb, because this is God's preparation. And then you, you think it, that you're the wife. You are the, you've been called to this feast. It's not great because you're going to be there or because I'm going to be there. We certainly will. It'll be great to us, but its greatness is because it's the marriage supper of the Lamb. Blessed are they that are called unto this supper. Worthy, <clears throat> worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Now this should be an indication to us of the greatness of the marriage supper also because this is the Lamb that we are married to, that we're betrothed to and will be married to. This should give us a better understanding of the word blessed when, the John, when John says, pardon me, when the angel says to John, blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. The supper is for the Lamb and it will be worthy of the Lamb. <clears throat> now this is different from other suppers also and, from, and different from other feasts. <clears throat> now health experts tell us that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. <clears throat> well, not so in heaven. This isn't going to be a breakfast. This isn't going to be a snack or a lunch, something to kind of hold you over until the big meal. This, this is the great supper. This is the marriage supper of the Lamb. Not a meal just to get us up and going. This is the main meal now. This is the meal you've waited for and you've labored for and you've prepared for all day. This is the main meal of the day. <clears throat> The Lord taught us this concept in the Jewish feasts, for example, like the Feast of Purim in Esther's day and the Feast of the Passover. Although we, we sit and we, we feast, actually the food is not really the main point. The food is certainly good. It's excellent fare, but the feast has a purpose to it. It's not just about eating. At the feast, the people in the Jewish feast, they would be remembering what God had done. They'd be remembering their deliverance and their redemption and their freedom and things such as this, escaping from death. Likewise, at the marriage supper of the Lamb, the main point of the feast is to celebrate that the Lamb has gotten his bride. <clears throat> All the saints will be gathered together for a feast designed to acknowledge that God accomplished the marriage of his son. And not only will we celebrate that the marriage has taken place, but also that we are his bride, his wife. And not only that we are his wife, but we will also have the great honor of sitting at the supper with Jesus to himself to the acknowledgement that he is our bridegroom. Unlike other feasts, the marriage supper of the Lamb won't be held while on the move. <clears throat> the table won't be set in the wilderness or in the presence of enemies, but we'll sit with Jesus in the perfect peace, peace and safety of heaven. And there won't be any defilement there. <clears throat> this is an invitation-only supper. Only those who are called will partake of it. It also requires a special wedding garment without which no one will be allowed in. Fine linen, clean and white, are the holy garments provided by God through Jesus Christ, and all the saints will have them on. So you see that this is, 
there has been a lot of preparation go into this marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, there's been preparation here on earth. The Lord's been doing a great work here on the earth, preparing his people, preparing us. You, you know we're still being prepared, and you're laboring to be ready for the Lord when he comes again. But don't forget, there's been preparation in heaven, too. The marriage supper is going to be there. There's been a great preparation. The table's being set there now for the marriage supper of the Lamb. <clears throat> it's no coincidence that wedding suppers are a tradition in cultures all over the world. <clears throat> the Lord has put this in place to, to get us thinking about the great marriage supper and to see that this is something that God is going to do and to begin to understand the things that are before us. You might not think that marriage is associated with a supper but here it is all over the world people do it they, they get married and at the at the wedding they sit down and have a supper together often <clears throat> enjoy a celebration of what has taken place Jesus said concerning his last Passover with his disciples with desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. <clears throat> now at this last Passover, Jesus had a strong desire to eat with no one but his disciples. The scribes and Pharisees were not invited. Even, even other believers were not there. But this is, what, I, what we want to see here is that those in the marriage supper are those closest to Christ, which, which is all the saints, by the way. But you see this, Jesus said, I, I, with desire, with desire, I've desired to have this supper with you, my closest disciples. Now, this is, this is the intimacy of the marriage supper of the Lamb here. That this, this is not just a, a general, Sister Michelle spoke of this, a general feast where just everyone's invited. This is an invitation-only supper that only the bride, blessed are they, that are called unto this supper. Only the bride <clears throat> will sit at this supper, and surely Jesus has strong desire for this marriage supper. <clears throat> the marriage supper is the culmination, and everything else has been taken care of prior to this. This will be after the conversion of Israel, after the fall of Babylon, <clears throat> After the glory of the Lord covers the face of the earth as the waters do. <clears throat> after the coming of the Lord as a thief in the night. After the elements melt with the fervent heat and the heavens and earth pass away and a new heavens and earth. After the judgment. After this is the marriage supper of the Lamb. <clears throat> this is the, so it's the culmination. After the sheep and goats are gathered. <clears throat> We'll sit down at the table prepared with Jesus, the Lamb of God, and feast on heavenly fare at the marriage supper without interruption, without distraction, without the presence of enmity, in peace with great joy and love, without concern for time. It will dawn upon each one of us what it means to be married to the Lamb at this supper, and we'll partake of our first feast as the married lamb and his wife. As the father, the beasts, and the elders before the throne all look on, and the holy angels and principalities and powers and heavenly places look on, Christ and his bride will sit together at the same table and feast upon things divine. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees well refined. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And there shall be no more night there. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. The marriage supper of the Lamb will be the launch pad for all eternity. 
From then on, we will be joined to Christ as a married man and a woman are made one flesh here in this world. <clears throat> we will reign through the ages with Jesus Christ, sitting with him in his throne. Now, whatever, God, whatever work God has for us to do, whatever Jesus Christ himself will be involved in in an eternity to come, there will be his, his bride with him. This is, see, the Lord's teaching us this in this, in this world. They that are married are one flesh. Well, th and the Lord has promised to us that he that overcometh will sit with me in my throne, even as I have sat down with my father in his throne. So whatever Jesus does in eternity to come, there will be the saints with him, doing it with him. So the, the marriage supper is the, is the start of that. So this is a very great supper. <clears throat> now, if this is the thing that you long for, and if you're watching for the Lord to return and to take you into this marriage supper, then I want to leave you with a special word from Jesus about this. Something else for you to consider. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily, I say unto you, Verily, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet. They will come forth and serve them.